Hello and welcome to the show. Today we're speaking to an equipment supplier and integrator of professional video equipment whose primary market is commercial and public TV stations, as well as providing systems to professional, educational, house of worship and government markets. Yeah, and specifically for today, we're discussing the use of new tech for commercial and public TV stations. So let's get started and welcome Dennis Klass from Heartland Video Systems into the studio. Hi, Dennis. Good to see you. Good day. Thanks for having me on. I, uh, I appreciate being part of your your program today. It's yeah. um, I like the format of these programs. They're, they're short enough yeah. that we're able to uh, watch them without being forced to watch an hour-long webinar. So I appreciate the yeah, opportunity. There you go. Well, let, let's hope so. We haven't got started yet. So who knows where this might go? <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> so so, so let, let's start, Dennis. What does a typical news production studio and control room look like these days? So they've evolved quite a bit throughout the years. And, and news production is uh, somewhere between four to seven hours a day of live news. And these are short segments with a high amount of graphic elements and uh, other effects. So they're very fast paced, um, meaning our, our equipment is very finely tuned. We use a fair bit of automation and operator assist to enable this number of hours uh, of news a day and at the level of sophistication that we have. Um, you know, this means in general these systems are expensive and they're, they're also uh, a long training curve. So we don't often like to change things inside of these systems mm. because of the price and the uh, the long training curve and, and our worry of the on-air look, right? We don't want to lose our brand. Um, mm. So these are very sophisticated yeah. systems and, and very high production value as well. So let's, let's bring new tech into the conversation now. What benefits are, you, are they bringing to the commercial television control room, the commercial station in particular here? Yes, in the commercial area, uh, because of the, the, the expense and the complexity of the main production system, um, generally they don't have a backup system in, in most cases, which is unbelievable. If you think about four to six hours a day of live programming and you don't have yeah. a, a a relatively working backup system, it, it's it's quite a uh, a concern, and so we look at at new tech as being something that can first of all be a, a disaster recovery. I have an emergency. How do I keep this these hours of news on the air? Um, we also yeah. look at areas. Um, if we have heavy news days, we might have something like an election, a local event, like a, a court case or a sporting event that mm -hmm. we, we want to do some additional coverage. A, a secondary studio to augment our main studio is, is an important thing to have. Um, that way we can expand the coverage we do and, and we still have other news breaking throughout the day that we need to cover with that main studio. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we also have uh, pre-recording of news events where we we might have a, a guest that can't come in during a newscast, so we could record them earlier, or doing other pre-recorded internal um, news things where we can do them live to file instead of doing. Um, editing of that ahead of time or doing it live during the newscast. It helps to, to lower the complexity yeah. of the of the news studio itself. So bringing the, right. the TriCaster in really allows us to, um, you know, back up our main system, augment that system, and, and do some other things that we can't do in that busy control room. Yeah, so there's a lot of options yeah. there. And I guess another option is also that with that additional control room, the um, the students enabled to be rented out to other organizations as well, maybe? Yes, absolutely. We're seeing a, a, a growing number of national news organizations looking for local studios to uh, have guest hosts appear where they're connected and uh, uh, a studio space to rent. So it's an opportunity for a, a local TV station to have that, that space to rent out. 
Um, there's also some other areas that a station can use a second studio like this or a second control room. Um, if we look at uh, streaming events, those those large news news events that I mentioned, you might also want to stream them out over the top. So you have your on-air broadcast, but you also have an over-the-top longer event coverage at the same time. This is something we didn't really have this option a number of years ago, and now it's there. Um, it's hard to do that with your main news studio when it's busy with other news, weather, and sports throughout the day. Mm. Um, so the, the streaming is also a, 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 a new function, really, that, that we're not geared up to do in television. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, that brings on, you say, you, you mentioned a moment ago, they, these systems can be very expensive. Public TV stations are going to have different production needs than, than commercial stations as well, possibly, that they're going to keep the equipment longer because the investment and, and the smaller budgets. So h how, are you, how are you working in that environment? How are you helping there? Yes, absolutely. The, the, the public station uh, funding is much different. It's usually uh, a longer capital cycle, so they really need to be careful about buying a product that can work for uh, many years down the road. And uh, one mm -hmm. of the advantages of the, the new tech system is they're, they're always cutting edge, new resolutions, new inputs, new production features. So if that's built into your system, even if you're not looking for that feature today, the fact that it's there is going to be a benefit some years down the road. Um, mm -hmm. Another advantage is the the, the all-in-one production system in a in a smaller footprint enables the the differences we have in a public station to. Uh, make this portable. They can move it in a rolling cart on a campus and, and uh, work to do a sports production or a performance on campus, or even use a, a trailer or truck to take the production system to a, to another venue. Um, this is way, much yeah. different than news production. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to better utilize your production capability um, uh, for these different venues. Yeah. Mm. So Dennis, for those that uh, might not be that familiar with TriCaster, can you give us a, a quick rundown of the, the key technical drivers that it offers to both of the markets we've been discussing? Sure. Um, by its nature, the TriCaster is a virtualized system and, and really has, um, you know, we all knew the video toaster from many years ago and the, the concept was the same, right? It's a, it's a, it's a unified production system. So it, we normally think of outboard components. With the TriCaster, we have a centralized system that includes switching, graphics, audio, um, clip players, clip recorders. Um, it's got a Skype interface. and It has um, quite a few features that are all built into this unified production system. So instead of buying different components, it, it's, it's all built into a single system. The sources in the TriCaster are, are not as limiting as we'd have in typical production systems, right? We'd include SDI, but we also have IP sources from NDI um, and compressed IP, as well as things like Skype in, inputs. Um, there's also NDI software apps you can load on PCs and Android and things like that to bring in all of your content natively. Um, Many of the new cameras have NDI interfaces in the cameras, and and not to go too deep into NDI, but it's um, I think New Tech has had a pretty nice demo in the last couple of shows we've been able to attend. They just take an off-the-shelf, low-quality IP switch and and just plug in their sources, and it works. It's quite the opposite of studio-level um, uncompressed IP, which is a, a much higher level of um, IP switch and uh, configuration to make it work. Um, yeah, the, in the TriCaster, the, the, the newer systems have more processing power just by the nature of CPUs. So we're able to have, we're able to have multiple MEs, higher chroma key quality, uh, virtual sets, multiple independent outputs so we can have clean feeds and ISO records. Um, we also have more automation. So um, 
it does allow us to do a more complex production with a TriCaster than we may have thought we were able to in the past. Um, even new interfaces, SMPTE 2110 is now a TriCaster input, as well as Dante and AES67 audio. So many of these units can, can plug and play with, with a fair number of existing um, systems already in-house. So you mentioned the, 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 the second studio there. What, what, what comes to mind first is affordability. Public TV stations' budgets aren't quite, you know, what, they, what, they, what we would like them to be. How affordable are they? Yeah, absolutely. The, the TriCaster has several models, which helps us to address which size studio you're looking uh, to operate. And those include different numbers of inputs, as well as the, the processing horsepower inside of the TriCaster. There's some main functions that are always within the TriCaster, as far as the audio function and the basic operation but the scalability is there with different models. We also have different work surfaces available. So you could start with a smaller work surface and, and, and work to a larger work surface uh, if your production so requires that. Mm. Yeah, so you've got, that, uh, you've got that great scalability there. Dennis, thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure talking to you and hopefully we can catch up um, again in the future about other things you're doing. Um, do check out hvs-inc.com for all the information um, on Dennis's company and all the services that they offer. Thank you to Media Proxy for their support at Kit Plus TV and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.